Ten years after the collapse of a local fish farming business, the island community of Ithaca have been left to reckon with an environmental catastrophe. Close to the fish farm, they were completely covered with plastics and uh, iron parts. And then on the seafloor, it's a big mess. It was fully covered with fish nets and many iron parts and tires. When I saw what's happening down there, I was really disappointed from what people do to the environment. And I was in shock, actually. In September 2020, a cyclone ravaged the coastal regions of Greece and its neighboring islands, spreading and intensifying the situation. Now, in some areas of the seabed, there is no life left at all. Ghost gear is the most common form of plastic that we find in Greece, 20% of what currently exists. Marine plastic pollution and the climate crisis is destroying the Earth, of course, but it's also affecting our societies. Following in the steps of Odysseus, the islanders have faced a decade-long battle to make amends with their environment. This fabled island, an allegory for humanity's journey through life, now a forewarning of what our future could hold if we carry on this same path. If we don't do something about that, the Earth is going to survive. Humanity is not going to make it. Despite the overwhelming scale of the problem, the island is pushing for a bright future. Volunteers brought together by the team at Healthy Seas are working to restore Ithaca's marine environment to its former glory. In the last 10 years, no one was able to help, and none of us could do it alone. We merged forces, and together with this broad range of partners, we can make it happen. This project is about five times bigger than any other cleanup we have done so far. We are very happy to be here, and hope Poseidon will be with us. Split into four teams, the divers scour the ocean floor. Miles of nets are tangled on rocks and industrial wreckage that need to be cut free. It's a huge skill. At one point after a day, I was thinking, where are we starting? What is this? You know, are we really doing this? But we uh, just start from the beginning, and we, everything we see, we shoot up with uh, filled balloons. That we call that lift bags. Today I have been counting the seagrass. How many plants are there per quarter square meter? So I'm basically assessing how can the habitat look if there's not the damaging effects of a net. So the net is collecting, collecting uh, more and more animals. And eventually it's in sinking down to the seafloor because it's full of corpses. Then the corpses degrade and the net will rise again. So it's a constant circle and the nets just keep doing what they are designed and built for. They yeah, catch, catch fish and marine life. Our main goal is actually that we, we want to remove this whole fish farm. I don't want to leave anything behind. Now we start it, it has to go. In circular economy, waste is a resource. We make sure that the materials we collect is being cleaned, sorted, and sent to different uh, recycling channels. The nylon six type of fishing nets, together with other nylon waste, become uh, so-called iconil yarn, which is the basis for a wide range of new products, uh, socks, swimwear, carpet, sportwear, even the car industry is using this material for interior. What we have in front of us right now cannot be fixed by one group alone. I mean, if enough money was thrown at it, probably somebody could come in and clean it up. But what I find fantastic is that volunteers, NGOs, uh, private enterprises, we got it together in like maybe a few months. Imagine what can be done in other places. Community, you can't take it away from the sense of a circular economy. It's almost actually the definition of it.
it is really important that all these organizations and, and people come together and solve this problem. People are going to see what happened there, and it's a good example to protect the island and the environment so this thing will not happen again. <laughs>